Good morning, good morning, good morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and already glad in it. I hope you are up and ready to receive the word of the Lord this morning. I hope you are excited as I am about the word of the Lord. Why? Because the word of the Lord it is life changing. It is our meat. It is our bread. I am so excited about what the Lord is showing us on this week. El Rohi, the God that sees me. Listen, if you have not already, thank you, Isha. She's all always on her assignment, helping me to share the gospel. If you have not already, I want you to go ahead and tag and share the word of the Lord this morning. My God, my God, I am so excited about the Lord, about what he's doing in this season, about his warnings about his urging. If you are excited about the word of the Lord and about what he's doing in this season, I need you to go ahead. Listen, I need you to go ahead and tag. I need you to go ahead and share. I need you to go ahead and just drop in that chat. I'm excited about this season. I'm excited about this season. And and I think when I think about it, uh, it's the reason why you see me smiling like this, because I just think about how much God loves us enough to warn us about what is to come enough to give us a prophetic word to, to, to speak from the heavenlies to us. So I'm so excited about that. I hope you are too. I want to jump right into the word of the Lord on this morning. We are talking about El Roy, the God that sees me. And then we learned on yesterday, Ishmael, the God that hears me. He said, and we learned on yesterday, we studied um, Hagar on yesterday, where it talked about Hagar running away from Sarai running away from Sarah and, and, and not even knowing where she going. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to her and he asked her, where are you going and what are you running from? Y'all, where are you going and what is it that you running from? And then the angel of the Lord told her, now go back because there's purpose in your life. There's purpose in that situation. There is more to your story than you running away from us. I'm trying y'all. There's more to your story than you running away from a situation. What is God saying in this season? It's time to stop running and confront. Okay, yeah, I, I know I came out the gate hot this morning. It's time to stop running and confront it. He told Sarah, he said, go back, repent and submit. It is time to stop running and to confront some, okay, I hear you Holy Spirit. It's time to stop running and confront some things. But God, but the Holy Spirit is saying this morning, you need to be careful. Listen to this. You need to be careful that I'm really sending you back and it's not your flesh. I'm going to say that one more time. He says, be careful, pray fast, seek my face that I am sending you back and it's not your flesh. Because mm. there's some things that God set us free from. And he says, don't ever go back to what broke you. It's some things that God set us free from. And he said, don't go back. It's some things that God set us free from. And he said, you overstayed your timing in that season. So when we go back, when the angel of the Lord came to appear to Hagar and told her, submit, go back, submit and repent. She had to be sure. She knew this was the angel of the Lord. She wasn't confused. Okay, watch this. She was not confused about what she heard the Lord say about what she heard the Lord say and about what he told her to do. She was not confused about that. She said, and because of that, she said, I understand that you are the God that sees me. Sees me how? In my brokenness. Sees me how? When I've been cast out. Sees me how? When I've been sexually used. See me how? When I've been verbally abused. She said, God, you see me. Meaning, watch this, that he knows me. He says, I know that, that no, and we're going to deal with this this morning. He, God says, I know, watch this. I know the numbers of hairs on your head. Mm, mm. Sabria, watch this. So, so we got to be careful. We, we got to know when to move when God say move. We got to know when he says go back. And we know, we got to know when he said your time is up. Watch this. Because how many of us, me included, I've done, I've done this. I've overstayed my, my time there. It's been the situation that I've been in and I overstayed my time there. And watch this. There's a price to pay when you stay in disobedience. When God say leave and you stay over your time. It's, it's a price to pay for that. It's a price to pay when God say go back and you don't go when he tell you. I've overstayed my time in some places. 
Because you know why we over I don't know who this is for because I don't even know why I'm going here. You know why we overstay our time? Because God will send us in places and we form relationships with people and we forget the assignment. That I'm sitting here on assignment and when my assignment is up, I need to go. I need to move on to the next. So we overstay out of relationship. But do you know that's disobedience? That's disobedience. Because you do know, okay. Listen, I, I, because yesterday, yesterday was so good all day. I just kept thinking about the word of the Lord on yesterday. So, you know, yesterday we learned that, watch this, that the first time an angel ever appeared, it was to Hagar, a broken person, a person who was running from the Lord. But this is the first time in the Bible an angel is appears, that it is written. Watch this. Not only that, but this is the, this is, this is the first time, watch this. That God tells her what to name a child before the child is born. Mm. A lot of hate, a, a lot of first with Hagar. Not only that, but God, but God gives Hagar the same promise he gave Abraham. Do y'all hear Holy Spirit this morning? So you can't judge a person, okay? You can't judge a person by the state that they're in when God speaks to them. You cannot judge a person by the state that they're in when God speaks to them. He's not a respecter of person. Oh God. Remember, remember now, Hagar was dealing with pride because she got she got pregnant and Sarah didn't. So she started thinking she was better than this. So it's a whole lot going on. Yet, watch this. Yet the angel of the Lord appeared to her. Okay, let me, let me. I, I got I got to get in a text this morning because you y'all know we can just stay here all morning and just keep going. But listen, so we already know about what Elroy High means. Elroy means it is the God who numbers the hairs on our head. He counts our every tear. He is our shepherd. He's seeing. He's looking and he's gazing. To gaze upon something is almost like you looking at it and and your 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 sight is let's, okay. Your sight is fixed and focused on that one thing. Whew. Elroy, he sees me. He gazes upon me. Who Lord, watch this. It says, it says, Elroy means he sees us when we feel most invisible. When we feel like we're alone. Don't nobody care. He said, I see you in that state. Listen. It says, not only do he see us, but he witnesses our struggles and comes alongside us. He knows every detail of your circumstance. He says, I'm concerned about that thing that you're concerned about. I'm concerned about everything concerning you, you this morning. It says, it says, El Roy High means when we pray, we're praying to a God who already knows everything. You're not praying. You're not praying. Good morning, Brother Williams. You're not praying to someone who don't know. It's not like you're having a conversation with a person. When you talk to God, talk to God. When you talk to God, talk to him as El Roy High. He is the God that knows everything about me so I don't have to explain myself. He knows me. He know my heart. He know my thinking. He know my ways. He know my act. He know me. In fact, and in fact, he know me better than I know myself. He already know what I'm going to do when I'm sitting here praying. You're talking to a God who knows everything. And it's you're talking to a God who knows everything and the same God that sees you and he hears you. Men, God hears on a different level than us. Watch this. God hears on a different level than us. We Y'all hear me because you hear the words coming out of my mouth. It's audible. God hears what's not spoken. God hears the words that's not even spoken. God hears the heart. God hears the mind. Who, Lord? Listen. He hears the mind. Mm, let's get into this. Luke 12, 1 through 7. Who this is going to be good this morning. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Watch this. Luke 12, 1 through 7. Meanwhile, when a crowd of thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first, first to his disciples. Okay. Can y'all just drop in the chat? Because I need, I need, I need y'all to prophesy this morning. I am a disciple of Christ. I 
am a disciple of Christ, meaning we follow him, we study him. I am a disciple of Christ, meaning I am an, am a, I am an ambassador. I represent him in the earth. I am a disciple of Christ. So listen to this. It says, meanwhile, when a crowd of thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. He said, I'm going to deal with y'all first. What, wh watch what he say. Watch what he tell them. Be on guard against the yeast of the Pharisees. Here we go. Deception and confusion. De deception and confusion. He says, be on guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed. There is verse two. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed. Or hidden that will not be made known. <laughs> oh God, I love you. Verse 3. What, what you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the rooftops. There are no secrets. He said, I reveal what I need to reveal. Okay. Verse 4. I tell you, my friends. Listen, I tell you, my friends. Do not be afraid of those who killed the body and after that you can be you can do no more. Verse 5. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after the body has been killed has authority to throw you into hell. That's who you need to be scared of. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Verse 6. Are not the five sparrows sold for two pennies? Very cheap. Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. God has not forgotten you. Listen to this. God has not forgotten you. I don't care what state you in, what it looked like, what you did. He said, I have not forgotten you. Listen, verse seven. He says, indeed, it is, indeed, it is a fact. It is so that the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid because you're worth more than a sparrow. Y'all, <laughs> God, can y'all just drop this in the chat this morning? God has not forgotten me. God has not forgotten me. God has not forgotten me. God has not. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what it looked like. God has not forgotten you. Let's, let's, let's dig in this text. It says a, a multitude of people had gathered around because as Jesus continued in the general direction, he was going towards Jerusalem. Vast, vast multitudes came to hear him. It says the crowds were so large that people got hurt. The people that came to hear the word of the Lord, because they were hungry, they were thirsty. It says, it says, it was so many people that they began to push and shove the people got hurt. But did they care? No, because there is a word from the Lord and I need to hear it. Listen, and what did Jesus tell his disciples? He says, y'all pay attention. He said, pay attention disciples we are disciples he told them he said pay attention he said beware of them pharisees y'all know who the pharisees was y'all y'all know that jesus told them um you pharisees you watch the outside of the tomb when the inside is dead men bones he said you watch the outside because the pharisees were so concerned about appearance they were so concerned about how they sounded they were so concerned about how they were perceived by the people but their insides was dirty they were nasty. Watch this. He says, beware of them disciples. He says, listen, he, he was warning them against the great hypocrisy, deception and confusion. The same word that, that the Lord gave us for, for 2024, deception and confusion. He said, beware, beware. What, what, what did God tell us in 2024? There will be a great falling away. Beware those that have the form of godliness, but denying the part, but denying the power thereof. There will be a great falling away. Beware. Don't be deceived. Don't be tricked. It says, he telling his disciples. He says, I'm warning you against the great danger of, of hypocrisy. And he, he compared it to leaven. Hypocrisy is like leaven in the sense that, it, watch this. It only takes a little bit. Watch this. He said, with those, with those Pharisees, he said, I'm going to compare it to leaven. He said, it only take a little bit. If you put a little bit of leaven in bread, it make it rise. It only take just a pinch. Mm. In this season, this is why you have to be careful. You have to study the word for yourself because it only takes a little bit. It can appear. 
what crossover service what did God tell us he said it can look, he said it can look like me it can sound like me but you better know that it's not me this is why I'm pouring out a supernatural spirit of discernment so you won't be deceived Jesus telling his disciples beware of them Pharisees he said it only takes a little bit to make the whole thing rotten it only takes a look it only takes a little bit because if you if you if you read carefully this is why I study the Bible like I do. This is why whenever I get a prophetic word, I'm going to weigh it. See, some of us don't weigh the prophetic. It says you judge the spirit by the spirit. Okay. Whenever you get a prophetic word, you weigh it. How does this line up with the word of God? Or did they just check my Facebook page first? And coming to tell me something that I already put. Okay. I'm a, I ain't, I ain't going to mess with them this morning, y'all. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. Listen, it says... The temptation to hypocrisy is often strongest to those who enjoy some measure of outward success. Watch pe people that love, listen, people that love to be seen, you have to watch them carefully. People that love that microphone, you have to watch them carefully. It is our job, it is our job to weigh what they say. Is it lining up with the word of God? Is it all the word of God? Or have they mixed some of their flesh in there? Mm. Cuz a lot of this stuff that 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 that, that is going to going to drive the church away, that is going to deceive the church as mixtures of secular, mixtures of the world and they calling it God. And God is saying that ain't me. That ain't me. If you were studying, you would know that's not me. Cuz to eat me is to become okay. Because to eat me is to become me. That is why y'all see me smiling like, like somebody just, I just hit the lottery or something every morning. Because I love the word of God. Watch this. Because it causes me not to be tricked. It causes me not to be fooled. My team, if you ever invite any of my team to your church, and some watch them because they're going to get up and leave when they see mess. Because we don't, we weigh. God. We weigh the word of God. I know when you walk, I know when you're flowing in the prophetic and when you're entertaining me. I know when you're flowing in the prophetic and you're just trying to get me to sow some money. I know the difference. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be good, y'all. I'm going to be good this morning. It says, it says, for there is nothing covered. Then, then he says, he tells his disciples, don't worry about it. Listen to this. <laughs> he tells his disciples, don't worry about it. Because there is nothing covered that I will not reveal. There is nothing hidden that will not be known. It says, one day all things will be revealed. We can only be hypocrites before men. Listen, I can only be a hypocrite before men, but I can't be a hypocrite before God. Why? Because he's Elroy. He see me. I see your heart, your mind. I know your motives. God is saying this morning, I see you. So you can fool them, but you can't fool me. You can get a prayer line and think you can fool the prophet, but you can't fool me. Watch this. Okay. Because prophets know in part. They prophesy in part. But God said, don't get it twisted. I know everything about you. You can do that for them. Watch this. You can try to fool them. But you can't fool me. Listen. Then it goes on to say. He said, then he tells his disciples because, watch this. Jesus tells his disciples. He says, don't fear persecution. Why is he telling them this? Remember, because he knows all things. He already know their ending. He already know that, that all y'all, most of y'all are going to die as martyrs. Some of y'all are going to be crucified upside down. Some of y'all are going to be boiled alive. Some of y'all, some of y'all going to be exiled on the, on the island called Patmos. He said, I already know. So I'm telling you now, don't even fear that. It's going to happen to me first. Then they coming for y'all. This is what I tell my team. If you're on my team and God has assigned you to my team, do you know the level of warfare that I endure? You will get the hit too. Do you know when, when, when Satan, when he can't get me, he going to try y'all? Because y'all my arms, y'all hold, hold up my arms when I'm weak. Y'all help me when I'm going through. He says, so if he can't get me, he coming to you. Same thing Jesus told his disciples. You walking closely with me, you know me. He said, I'm going to suffer first. Who God? He said, y'all going to see me go through this thing first so y'all can go through the same thing. You're going to see me martyred first. You're going to see me crucified first, but y'all going to go through the same thing. He says, so understand, don't be afraid. Mm. Listen, it says, this is verse four through five. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who killed the body. And after that, they have, they can do nothing else to you. But I will show you 
whom you should fear. It says, this is who you need to be afraid of. Watch this. This is who you need to be afraid of. Fear him who after he has killed you, after man has killed you, crucified you, martyred you, has, he has, watch this, he has the power to determine if you're going to heaven or hell. That's who you better be afraid of. After they, listen, after they lie on you, okay, listen, after they lie on you, talk about you, um, reject you, he says, you got to understand, you don't even need to be afraid of them. Be afraid of me, God, the one who I know your ultimate fate. I know where you're going to go. He said, that's who you need to be afraid of. He said, why are you scared of people that can't do nothing to you? Listen, some of us are walking in fear of people that can't do nothing to us. He says, to suffer with me is to reign with me. Oh, Jesus. Whew. To suffer with me is to reign with me. When you suffering, baby, you in good company. When they talk about you in good company, why? Because they talked about Jesus. They crucified our Savior. He said, you afraid? He said, I'm giving you the greatest. I said, I'm going to show. Okay. What did Jesus do with his disciples? He said, I'm going to show you how to die. Oh, my God. Who? Listen. He said, I'm going to show you how to die. I'm going to show you how to face rejection. A prophet is not received in his own home. He said, I did more miracles outside of my home than I can do. I did more miracles outside than I can do in my home because they too familiar with me. That's Mary's boy. He said, that's Joseph's son. He's just a carpenter. I knew him when he was a kid. He said, so I couldn't do many miracles there because they were too familiar with me. And we get mad. They won't receive me. I'm trying, I'm trying to witness to them, but they won't receive me. Jesus said, I already gave you an example. He said, did I not say shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving? He said, did I not say to suffer with me is to reign with me? But we get all in our feelings. You know, I, and, and I, my team has been, I said, you know, I get, I have gotten so numb. Watch this. I've gotten so numb to rejection. I have gotten so numb because, because God had already told me, listen. When you're really called by God, <laughs> when you're really called by God to do this thing, to carry the gospel, when he called me in, in 1998, watch this, I already knew then it was do it or die. Th these were my choices. I wasn't like everybody else. Everybody told me, you know what, I think you should preach. It, I wasn't like that because I was born. My mother would witness to this. My brothers would witness to this. I was born knowing and hearing the voice of God. Listen, I knew his voice when I was a little girl. I was having end time dreams as a little girl. Watch this. So I already knew the voice of God. It's just that I didn't want to do it because of things that I saw. Listen, but, but what happened was God called me and I couldn't run no more. I was about 22, 23. He called me and I couldn't run no more. And he began to tell me then. He says, listen, you're going to say what I say. Your life will be an open book. You're going to get the victory in all things, but I'm going to get the glory out of your life. You're going to be my example in the earth. He says, watch this, and it ain't no quitting. Once you take on this, he said, you don't lay it. So I'm confused when people say I was called to preach, and then all of a sudden you ain't preach. But that's, a, that's for a whole other story. But because I know with me, it was do it or die. Hmm. I knew I was going to suffer. Going in it. I knew I was going to be an example. Going in it. I knew when I preached that initial sermon, I said, oh boy, it's on now. I knew that. So I didn't have a choice. Well, I had a choice, but I chose God. Because <laughs> it was either do it or die for me. Listen, so it says, it says, do not fear the persecution. So I already knew going into this thing that God would send me to, listen, that many times I would preach and minister to a rebellious people, but my assignment was to go there to let them know what God said, whether they receive it or not. That's the life of a prophet. I learned to become numb to rejection. I've learned to become numb to when I'm given a prophetic word and you're looking at me like, I'm numb to that. So oftentimes I tell people, I say, you know what? I ain't even talking to your flesh. I'm talking to your spirit, man. Who? Okay. Because if I talk to your flesh, then I will look on you. And I get in my feelings because, well, they didn't receive it. But I don't care. <laughs> I just know, like, like God told Ezekiel, the blood ain't going to be on my hands. Listen. So you learn from Jesus. He says, do not be afraid of them. 
that can reject you. Do not be afraid of them. That who oh God. Uh, do not be afraid of them that can do things to your flesh in this world. He said, yet yeah, you need to be afraid of me. I know your final state. I know if you're going to be in heaven or hell. That's who you be, need to be afraid of. So I don't understand how God can give us assignments. I don't know. Who, I don't even know why I'm in this vein this morning. I don't understand how God can give us an assignment. And we don't fulfill the assignment because we're afraid of man. Shouldn't you be more afraid of the one that gave you the assignment that you won't fulfill? What's going to happen because I did not fulfill? Do you know? I don't know who this is for. Do you know there are people that are assigned to your voice? And when you don't use your voice, what if they be lost? Because you decide, I'm too scared to get up there. I'm too scared to get up there. Flesh. That's why I tell you, when God called me and I said, okay, you called me into this office of the prophet because we got to understand this morning. It's two different. It's one thing to be in the office. It's another thing to have the gift. All four of my daughters have the gift of prophecy. Oh, I put them up against the best of them, but they don't walk in the office. Not yet. I walk in the office. When you walk in, okay, let me teach you this a little bit. So when you walk in the office, it is your lifestyle. Watch this. So because I walk in the office, I live a life of consecration. Not just because it's the new year, let's do 21 days. Mm -mm. I only fast when God tell me. I understand that I live a consecrated life, meaning that I am set apart. I can't go. I can't do what everybody else do. I'm good with that. I accepted that. There is a difference. The gift. If you're reading the Old Testament, watch this. If you're reading the Old Testament, because y'all know I'm an Old Testament head. I love it. I love them when God was just killing people. And, and if you... The whole Old Testament is like you reading a, a, a script off of a script off of a movie. Listen, if you read the Old Testament, there were the men of God, major and minor prophets. That's only because of the way the books are lined up. Let's understand that. Listen, because y'all do know my bachelor's degree is in religion and philosophy. So I, I eat and breathe this stuff. So the Old Testament, when you get to the books of the prophets, they are uh, they are arranged as major and minor. But watch this. And then you also have to understand. That there are schools of prophets. You also have to understand that when the spirit of prophecy hit the building, everybody can prophesy. Who do you know? Y'all seen it in my services. The spirit of prophet of, of prophecy hits the building, and everybody just start prophesying. And I start saying, "Say this, say this, say this," and you're prophesying. The spirit of prophecy is is evident. It's in the building. That's when the anointing of the prophecy drop. But then there is the office. Watch this. When y'all go home, it lifts. When the people that, when the spirit of prophecy come in the building and everybody begin to prophesy because that anointing is in the building, when you go home, it may lift off you. When I go home, it don't lift. Mm. When you leave the service about 10 o'clock and you go home, my team will tell you, I don't sleep because I'm still going and going and going and going and going. And when I lay down and I start dreaming, it's not really a dream. It's an open eye vision of me ministering. I live, I breathe, I eat this thing. It's a difference. That's why I tell people, don't, 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 don't say you want to be like me. Because this is a life of consecration. This is a life of submission. This is a life of denying myself of all the things this flesh want. It's a difference. So to reign with him means I had to suffer with him. Jesus was my great example of how to face rejection. Jesus was my great, great example, watch this, of how to die. <laughs> of how to die. He's our great. Listen, he should say, no, she wide awake. Yeah, they don't call me after service. I'm going to talk your head off about you. But they, poor my, my admin, she be on the phone like, okay, sis, I got to go to bed. It's like two o'clock. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I got one more thing to tell you. I got one more thing to tell you. And, and so my mama, she only, she be like, I ain't answering the phone because she going to hold me up for like three hours. I got, you know, I got to go. But listen, you got to understand the difference between the office and the, and the gift of prophecy. You got to understand that, listen, this is why y'all see me take my daughters on these elaborate trips. Because, why do I do that? Because they sacrifice their mama. Because they understand that there are times we will have plans to go do stuff elsewhere, hang out on the weekend, and God say, but I need her. So we have to, camp. I say, y'all go ahead without me. I got the Lord. Mm. So y'all don't know, y'all know back in the day, okay, I, I'm, I'm telling my age, well, y'all know I'm 50, 50 and fabulous. Listen, back in the day, it was this thing called being arrested by God.
if y'all know what the, if, if any of y'all on here know what I'm talking about, just say, it's this thing called being arrested by God. When you're in the grocery store and all of a sudden you feel that thing hit, who, my daughters will tell you, it, it, listen, y'all know, know how you get your nails done, they be doing your hand like this. <laughs> It's been times, poor thing, my, my little my little nail tech, she just, poor, God bless her little heart. There's been times she started doing my hand like this, and I'll be saying, in the name of Jesus, Father God, right now, ask the supernatural increase come up. And she be looking like, huh? Little Asian girl. Listen, so now they so, so now they play gospel music all in the nail salon when they see me coming. Because they know, oh, here she come. Here she come. Listen, so there's this thing called when, when the Holy Spirit arrests you. When God arrests you and you're in the grocery store and you can't help yourself. And you just, oh God, and you just start going in, arrested. So when I get like that, my daughters understand now. We got to go on without her. Or they'll tell me, Mama, we going to a movie. Now, if they have a scene in here. We don't need you. Mom, please don't embarrass. But they, they, listen, they, because they understand this is the office. Holy Ghost will arrest you at any given moment. Because you understand. Listen, you understand. You understand. Listen, my cousin Hercules is on here. Hercules, Paul, and God bless you. We did our initial sermons together. I went first. He went second. Listen, so, so, so we understand that there is this thing called being arrested by God. Whenever he needs you, whenever he wants you, whenever he needs to use you, you are available to him. If there's no there's no thing of saying, well, I ain't got time right now. Oh, I, I, I always have time. Do you understand that there's this thing that, that I understood when I accepted the call to preach the gospel? I understood that it was no longer my life but his. It was no longer my mind but his. So whenever he want to take control, Holy Spirit have your way. Grant I grant him access every day. Listen, so, so let me get back to this. Jesus said, you will be persecuted. He said, but don't be afraid. He said, I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who killed the body. Because after they kill you, they can't do nothing else to you. He said, but you better be afraid of me. Mm. He said, you better be afraid of me because I can determine where you go after they killed the body. Okay. When Jesus spoke these, when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he knew that all of them would face the same demise as him. Watch this. But what did Jesus show them? He said, I'm going to show you how to die, but I'm going to show you when I come back as well. Whoop, whoop. Okay. He said, I'm going to show you that after man, after man crucify me, they don't have the final say. They don't have the final say. He said, I'm going to show you how to die. And how to die with dignity. I'm going to show you how to die and pray for those that persecute you. Father God, um, don't, don't crucify them because of what they don't know. He said, I'm going to show you how to be on a cross and praying for your killers. I'm going to show you how to be on a cross and praying for those that reject you. Praying for them. He said, I'm going to show you how to be on a cross and, and, and still give forgiveness. Oh, God have mercy. He said, then I'm going to show you. That even after they killed me, they didn't win. Ooh, okay. Because somebody dropped that in the chat. After they killed me, I realized they didn't win. After they reject me, I realized they didn't win. Jesus said, in fact, no man take my life. Mm, God, I love you this morning. He said, no man take my life. He said, I'm laying it down. I'm making a choice. <laughs> oh, God. To let you look like you won. I'm, I'm making a choice to make it look like you getting the victory. But I'm making a choice because God going to get the glory. My father in heaven going to get the glory out of this. Mm, listen. Listen to this. Oh, God, I love you this morning. It says, all persecutors can do is kill. But God has ultimate power over life and death of every believer, every disciple. He said, I got the last say. Y'all do know that, right? Watch this. Therefore, we shouldn't fear our persecutors. But have a healthy, listen, he said, you don't fear me as in, listen to this. He said, you don't fear God as in afraid to talk to him. He said, you fear God in the aspect of respect him. Listen, you fear God in the aspect of I respect him because of his authority, because of his power. I respect him. Listen, it says, it says, Mark 8, 35 through 36. Listen to this. For whosoever. Okay, let me let me calm it down. <laughs> Mark 8, 35 through 36. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake shall save it. 
For what shall pro what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? What is it gonna profit you? Because everybody like me, honey. My grandma used to always tell me when I it, it was so strange because when I was called to preach, I called both my grandmothers. Because both of them were mothers in the church, mothers in Zion, they lived this thing. So I called both of them. I said, God called me to preach. My my grandmother, who I'm named after, Elizabeth Pauling, she said, Well, what did he say? <laughs> See, see, see now, now, nowadays, people say they call to preach, we give them a mic. I don't. But people that people that say they were called to preach, we just give them a mic. My grandmother asked me, my first grandmother say, um, well, when he called you, what did he say? Tell me about your experience. When I told her, she said, oh, yeah, he called you. <laughs> called my other grandmother, told her, Mother Broom, I said, Mom, I said, God called me to preach. She said, for the rest of your life? <laughs> Listen, it wasn't no, yeah, come on, let's do your initials. It wasn't none of that. What did he say? Other grandmother, it's for the rest of your life. <laughs> you gonna give up your life? That that was a that was they talked to me. Because they knew how serious this thing was. Listen, and, and the thing that I love about this, both grandmothers knew that I had this call on my life when I was a little girl. But they both questioned, made sure, listen, that my calling was sure. Okay. But we don't do that. Okay. I'm gonna stay right here. To, it says, for what shall it profit a man to gain the world and to lose his soul? Whew. What pro what, what is it going to, you so much afraid of the world, but you losing your soul. I can't do it. Mm. I can't do it because I, I can't do it because of what people going to say. I can't go there because now I'm going to be different. I'm going to be by myself. Everyone, I see you. you ain't, you're never alone. Listen, it says, watch this. It says this, listen. Back to back to the disciples. It says, when, when Jesus started telling about the five sparrows, watch this. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten by God? He says, but I number, he said, I even know. He said, if I take care of them sparrows, they're sold for dirt cheap. Do you think I ain't gonna take care of you? <laughs> my creation? My children? Listen, my children, because listen. He says, my children, do you think I'm not going to take care of you? If I can take care of a bird that, that's, that, that's worth little of nothing? He said, not only will I take care of you, because I'm El Roy, I'm your shepherd, I see you, I got you. Can y'all please drop that in the chat? God got me. Tell her you already in the bank. God got me. I have no need to fear. I have no need to worry. Who God? I remember, I remember one day me and my dad was in the car. And I know I'm just all over the place. This is gonna make sense when I when I when I tie it all together. I remember when, when me and my dad was in the car, we were leaving chemo, and and that song I think it was by I can't remember the song the, the uh, person that wrote the song, but it, it was saying um oh God it it was saying that no matter where I am, God got me. Listen, and my dad began to say he said turn that up, turn that up, and and and, and he began to tell me he says no matter what I mean he said God got me. This is what it was. I have no reason to fear. Y'all know that song? I have no reason to fear. That song. And my dad, well, he was like, oh, turn that up. And he looked at me. He said, I have no reason to fear. Mm. And, and if, if you were there when I did my, my dad's eulogy, the, the, I, I used his favorite scripture because we would talk about this. What's your favorite scripture? Psalms 23. He said, but I like that part when they say, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Why? Because it's just a shadow. And my dad told me, he said, he said, baby girl, he said, I thank you. Look, my psalmist in here, J.J. Harrison, she know it. Listen, listen, my daddy told me, he says, I'm not afraid. And I would get upset because I didn't want to have these conversations. But my daddy knew my time is near. And he would tell me, he said, I don't, I'm not afraid. Yay, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's just a shadow. It's not the real thing. Y'all, I can, listen, it's just a shadow. What you're going through is just a shadow. It's not the real thing. It's, it's not the real thing. Watch this. It is not the real thing. Oh, God, I'm trying to figure out how to get something off here, and I can't. So if, um, whoever this is that's on here begging, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. If you needed help, you should have came into my inbox. Do not disturb the people of God with your begging. If you need something, inbox me. Inbox me. Okay, let, let me let me keep going. Let me keep going. That's just a distraction. Let me keep going. 
let me keep going. So what you have to understand, listen, what you have to understand is that you have no reason to fear. You have no reason to be afraid of what you're dealing with, what you're going through. It is just a shadow. It's not the real thing. Watch this. He says, realize your great, va watch this, realize your great value to God. He said, I take care of, watch this, I take care of the birds, the sparrows. So you think I won't take care of you, my chosen, my remnant, my children? He said, I will take care of you. And not only that, but I know the numbers of hairs on your head. Watch this. He says, I know the numbers of hairs on your head. Oh God. He says, and I not want, he says, and I have not forgotten you. Watch this. I begin to look this thing up. I said, God know the numbers of hairs on my head. Huh? Huh? Watch this. That means, listen to this, depending on your hair, y'all know I got to teach this a little bit. Depending on your hair color, listen, the average person has between, listen to this, 90,000 and 150,000 hairs on their head. God said, I know every one of them. Who, I'm going to say that one more time. The average person has between 90,000 and 150 hairs on their head. Yet God says, I know exactly how many you have down to the number. He says, if I know, he said, if I know that about you, what else do you think I know? Who? This is why he said, I'm concerned about everything concerning you. He says, I know how many hairs you got. I know that Dr. Three may have 90,000, but I know that Telly may have 100,000 and Sheila may have 133,000. He said, I know everything about you. I know when you're singing praises to me and your flesh, when you leave here, your flesh going somewhere else. Who? I know. Okay, let me, let, let me, mm -mm. I'm going to stay right here. It says, it says, this is how much he loved us. He says, not one day, but I'm concerned about everything concerning each one of you. Watch this. Listen, listen to how much God loves us. Romans 8, 35 through 39. And I'm going to get off of here. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Listen to this. What shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ? Shall trouble or hardship? Listen, all my family on here. Good morning, Nefertiria. Listen, listen. It says, it says, Listen, what shall separate me from the love of God? Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Who oh God, listen. Verse 36. As it is written. When he say that, y'all buckle your seatbelts. As, as it is written, for your sake, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered sheep to the slaughter. Verse 37. Know this. In all things, we are more than conquerors. Who? What did he say? You may be like a sheep going to the slaughter, but you're a winner. <laughs> you may be persecuted, lied on, talked about, rejected, but you're a winner. You, okay. It says, notice in all things that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 38. For I am convinced you can't change my mind. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither present, nor future, nor any power, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in this creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. I feel like I'm by myself. He said, I'm El Roy. I see you. What do you think? He says, listen, nothing you can do can make me change the way I feel about you. I <laughs> God. Well, listen, let's go back to Hagar. She was operating in pride. I'm pregnant, Sarah. You not. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm going to give him his firstborn. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So she was operating in pride. She ran away. Listen, she ran away from, listen, she ran away from Sarah trying to get away and ran smack dab into an angel. And he said, what are you running from and where are you going? <laughs> what can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? He said, Not, no demon, no angel, listen, no demon, no angel, no height, no depth. He said, not even depth, 
Not even light can separate you from my love. I love you with an everlasting love. Listen, we think that we love our kids. It don't even compare to the love that God has for us. What man going to lay down his life for us knowing that we're going to reject him? Who going to lay down their life for you knowing you're going to turn on them? Who going to lay that? I take it a step further. Who would bless you with certain things? Mm, the houses, the cars, the husband, the land. Knowing that you're going to make that your God. Knowing that you're going to take it and turn on him. Who would do that? Mm, I have four grown daughters. Two sets of twins, 25 and 30. Watch this. If you mess with them, I will cut a whole monkey. I will, y'all be like, is that Dr. Three? That's the one be on there prophesying and praying. That's the one was sold out in God's girl and worship faith. That's her acting like that. Yes, ma'am. That, that's all me. But that does not compare. Listen. That does not compare to how God love us. He said, even when you die, I still love. <laughs> he said, when you die, I still love you. He said, do you understand that if everybody, it was only one person in the world, I would have still went to the cross. Do you understand that there would be no such thing as forgiveness if I never went to the cross? I did that for you. Knowing, knowing, listen, knowing that in time you're going to reject me. Knowing that in time you're going to turn on me. But I still love you. Shh. Listen. It's a hard truth because we all did it. We all done chose our flesh over God. Tell the truth, shame the devil. My grandma said, tell the truth, shame the devil. We all have done it. We've all chosen our fleshly desires over what God is telling us. But he says that don't change my love for you. I am El Roy. I see you and I still love you. I saw Hagar. Being prideful, and I still loved her enough to give her the promise. Who do y'all hear the Holy Spirit? Out of all the stuff that you've done, this is why I tell people all the time I say, Baby, you ain't gonna be able to say you heard nothing about me. My life is an open book. I share everything I've been through, I go through, I struggle with for one purpose that it may change somebody's life so you don't go down the road I've been. So I tell people, No, you ain't got to hear you, baby, go on YouTube. Go over on YouTube. It's over a hundred something videos. I'm sure somewhere in there you heard my story. <laughs> Watch this. He says, and out of all that you've done, Elizabeth, talking about me now, out of all that you've done, listen, getting pregnant out of wedlock, getting divorced, losing your parent, losing your father, losing both grandmothers, having eight, eight nine surgeries, out of all you've been through, I still love you. Watch this. Out of all you've been through, I still choose you. <laughs> God. Out of all the, listen, hey God, after all being prideful, we know pride comes before the fall. He says, after all that, I still use you. I still love you. I'm still going to get the glory out of your life. In fact, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you the same blessing that I gave Abraham. He says, out of your loins shall be born an Ishmael, meaning that the Lord God hears. <laughs> he says, and just like I told Abraham, your descendants will be as the sand, as the if you can number the grains of sand on the beach. He says, Ishmael, same thing. I love you. I love you. I love, listen, listen. He says, I love you. I love you. I love you. So we got to understand that he is the God that sees us in whatever state that we in. Listen, we cannot hide from God. We cannot hide from his presence. In, in, in Psalms, it says, wherever you go, he said, wherever I go, God is there. If I ascend to the heavens, he's there. If I go to the pit of hell, he's there. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. You can't escape him. So instead of being so afraid of what man going to do, be more afraid of what God going to do. He has your final say, your final state. Not man. Not man. Mm, God, I love you this morning. Not man. Watch this. So I don't compromise. I don't compromise who I am in God because of whatever atmosphere I'm in. Listen, I take God with me everywhere I go. At some point, his name coming up. <laughs> Listen, because when you have relationship with him like that, 
You ever meet, you ever meet pet people? I remember my daughter got married. You ever meet people when they first get married? All they be saying is my husband, my husband this, and my wife that, and, my, and they so goo goo ga ga and look. That's how we should be about God. Because when you have relationship and you are in love with him, you get delivered from, Rebecca, you get delivered from the people. Mm. Do you know I've been in some churches and preached and they looked at me like this. The whole time I was preaching, line up on the front row. Who God? And do you know, listen, and this is what I love. When, when, when they line up on the front row, and, and this is my take on this, and let me get off here. This is my take on this. If you invited me to your church to preach, because now don't get it twisted because I don't accept a lot of his assignments. I only go where God tells me. But if you invite me to your church to minister or to preach the gospel, watch this. My thinking is you must have Googled me because I'm all over YouTube. I'm all over Facebook. I'm all over Instagram. Pick, pick, pick make a pick. I got a website. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm, I'm gonna make the assumption that you Googled me. <laughs> Listen, so I don't compromise how I flow in God because you invited me to your church. I don't care about your denomination. Whatever God give me to say, oh, it's coming up and out. Oh, and there will be deliverance because that's what I walk in. You don't go in a place and compromise who you are for the people. God told me, he said, daughter, he said, when you go in these places, he said, they may not receive you. He said, but understand this, I'm sending you on assignment. He said, you set your eyes like flint and preach the hell out of them. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Don't care. That, I, oh, I don't even care about denomination. Mm -mm. You want me to come? If God say, daughter, go. Oh, I'm coming. And I'm coming in the volume of the book that is written of me. I'm coming in the volume of the book that is written of me. What does that mean, Dr. Three? Everything God says that I am, I'm coming in that. Who? We don't compromise because of the atmosphere we in. In fact, I'm going to say this, and I promise y'all I'm getting off here. We don't, we don't compromise who we are because of the atmosphere that we in. Because we understand that we came to shift the atmosphere. Hmm. When I walk in this building, the atmosphere shift. When I walk in this nail salon, the atmosphere shift. I understand who I am in God. I understand that heaven backs me. Hmm. I understand. Listen, I understand that when I, when I wake up in the morning, hell trembles. I understand that Satan hates me and I hate him. We got to understand that. Hmm. I understand that I am, and you need to, listen, y'all need to understand who you are in God. Heaven is, can y'all just drop that in the chat and we getting off here. Heaven is backing you. Heaven is backing you. Air war is with you. He said, I see you. He said, no matter where you go, I'm there. He said, and if I'm walking with you, why are you afraid? If I'm walking of you, if I'm walking with you, why are you compromising? He said, heaven backing you. Meaning, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean, Dr. Three? That means, listen, that means that when I stand up to declare the word of the Lord, the angels stand up with me. They behind me. When I stand up to preach the word of God, I feel God's hand in my back. What does that mean? When I'm going through sickness, illness, situations, financial distress, whatever, God is with me. Heaven is backing me. Heaven is backing me. Heaven is backing me. I don't need man. I got heaven. <laughs> I got a legion of angels backing me. I don't know who this is for this morning. But fear and faith don't go together. When I know heaven is backing me. I walk in a different authority. Whew. People tell you to come to my service. They say she be so sweet till she get that mic. <laughs> She'd be so kind and loving till she get that mic. People that work with me come to service and be looking like, huh? Heaven is backing me. When you understand that, you walk in a different anointing and a different authority. You understand that heaven is backing me. So what can hell do? <laughs> if God, okay, if God be for me, who can be against me? He is God. If God be, listen, I'm getting off here this morning. If God be for you, who can be against you when heaven is backing me and you so you think you so you think that you can come up against God like really like you you really and I'm God chosen I'm on assignment I'm doing what he told me and you think 
Y'all better hear Holy Spirit this morning. Heaven is back. You listen, I got to get off here. I got to get off here. Listen, if you want to sow, the information is now on the bottom of the screen if you want to sow. But listen, I need you, I need you, I need you to meet me Friday night. To meet me Friday night. Friday night, Friday night, Friday night. Two, two, listen to this date. Two, two, 24. I'll deal with it Friday night. Two, two, 24. 2224. I need you to meet me Friday night, 7 p.m., 604 Doug May's place. There will be a shifting in the building. Listen, and I also want you to mark your calendars for um, Good Friday. Good Friday service, March 29th. It's on a Friday. Listen, mark your serve, mark your calendars. Make sure you get everything in line. I know I got a lot of people down there in Columbia. Listen, all my family is in Columbia. My Aunt Evelyn lives in East Over. Listen, so I, I'm in Columbia a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I got a lot of family down there. But listen, mark your calendars. Get Do whatever you got to do. Get your hotel rooms. Do whatever you got to do. March 29th, Good Friday. We taking it back old school. Back to the altar. Good Friday. When I get done, because because that whole week leading up to it, I'm going to teach on them last seven words. Then I'm going to close it out when it is finished. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Listen, <laughs> we're going to do communion. Listen, we're going to do communion. So so come, 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 gather with us this Friday, this Friday, this Friday, this Friday. Listen, this Friday, mm, 7 p.m., 604 Doug May's Place. If you ever been in my services, you already know. We sit under an open heaven. All my family from Columbia will be up here for Good Friday. So those of you that's down in Columbia, come. I'm sure y'all know my people because there's a whole lot of them down there. The Elmores, they're my people. The Paulins, they're my people. All down in Florida. Listen, I mean down in uh, Columbia. I got family in Florida too. That's why Florida popped in my head. But listen, all of them will be up here Good Friday. It's going to be a high time in the Lord. We got the psalmist, the minus coming. Listen, everybody flows in the prophetic. We flow on one accord. We just let God do what he want to do. We just show up and we his vessels this friday night same thing we show up and we just flow with god we his vessels we going back to the altar god has told me he said in 2024 daughter he said take them back he said take them back there has to be communion there has to be shutting oh another shut-in coming to me come and worry me another shut-in coming y'all know i do them old school shut-ins with the sheets and all oh I, i'm all old school Y'all have to know me. I got an old soul. I was I was birthed by the mothers of the church. So so we going back to the sheets and the anointing oil. I'll be passing. I'll be consecrating oil again. I consecrated about eight bottles this week for for another pastor. Listen. So I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready. I want you to equip yourself. I want you to get in alignment with God so you're not deceived. So you're not a part of that great falling away. Mmm. You don't want to be a part of that. But listen, we're sold out international. What does that mean? We live a sold out life. We're going to make mistakes. Absolutely. But we understand the power of repentance. The power of a true turn. Listen, so that's what my ministry is about. It's about deliverance and living this life to the full. It's about living life abundantly and living it God's way. Sold out. I'm sold out to God. Listen, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. If you want to sow, the information is on the bottom of the screen. Listen, I'll be back here in the morning, 5.30 a.m. going in for God again. I love you and I want you to have a good day on purpose.